everyone, welcome to Handmade Hero Show, where we code a complete game live on stream. We are going to do some debugging today. Uh, we did the implementation work necessary yesterday to support large textures in addition to our smaller textures that are designed for use in the game, which try to get packed into a texture array to avoid them uh, being sort of expensive in our dispatching. So uh, what we're trying to do today is figure out what we need to do to get OpenGL to deal with our new implementation. We got everything flung to the pipeline, uh, but we get black textures when we actually try to use uh, the cutscene textures. So we've got something um, subtly wrong in there. Maybe something's not getting initialized right. Maybe we're calling OpenGL slightly wrong. We don't know. So we got to actually take some time right now to go figure out what's wrong in there. Uh, and then once we do that, we can uh, move on to a couple other touch-up things for our renderer, which I think at this point is now uh, pretty good, right? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's starting to be relatively respectable for what it's supposed to do, which is, uh, you know, fairly advanced 3D sprite plus cubes kind of rendering system. Uh, the quality looks pretty good on it. So let's go ahead and load it up. Um, and... Today is 480, so start with day 479 source code if you're someone who has pre-ordered the game uh, and is working with the source code right now. Let's go ahead and uh, refresh the memory of what's going on here. So um, if you look at the code the way we have it, uh, the key thing that we added yesterday was a new pipeline for handling large textures. What we do is inside any quad dispatch, um, what we do is say the old school way we used to do things of having a texture per quad, you can still turn on. So essentially what happens is normally for anything in the game, we go through this path where we just bind a texture array and then can draw everything in one batch, which can greatly accelerate the rendering uh, on a lot of uh, GPUs because they don't like to see like lots of dispatches like that, uh, the old school GPUs. Uh, again, the more modern they get, the less they care about that. Uh, so, you know, again, it, your mileage may vary. But especially when you're using kind of old school OpenGL calls as well, like we are, so kind of back compatible stuff. Uh, getting the dispatch count up high uh, is bad, right? Um, and a lot of there's a lot of kind of new API and stuff that you need to do if you really want to be a, a large dispatch kind of a draw system. Uh, so since we don't want to do that and we don't need to do that and it allows us to support older cards if we wish to, um, we've got everything condensed pretty nicely down into just one texture array and one call. So you just bind and go and that draws basically the entire game right here, right? Uh, and we just do that four times, once for each depth peel, and then we're done. So really, the only thing we're trying to do here is enable a path that allows us to set up a texture per call situation for unusual cases, such as the cutscenes, where we have very irregularly sized textures, and we don't want to try to pack them into an atlas or a texture or anything else, and we don't want to do the extra work of gridding them or anything like that, because it's such a irregular thing that happens, and we know that there's very few of them, so we don't need to worry about the dispatch overhead. It's only going to be eight of them total, I think we counted, uh, in the highest use case. So this is specifically for the situation where we know that's what's going on. So in order to do this, what we want to do is take a look at, um, uh, at how this loop is working here, figure out what we've done wrong, because we did something wrong, uh, and try to get it working correctly. So we looked into it a little bit yesterday, and we found that at least to first... Um, approximation, we found that it didn't seem to be the actual texture passing that was the problem anyway. When we looked at this texture, it looked correct. Um, it was an actual valid texture handle that had been seen, um, and it seemed like it was uh, all set up properly. So we might have to dig a little deeper, find out a couple more things. Uh, did the texture get downloaded properly? You know, maybe it didn't. Uh, is the texture uh, stuff that's packed into the texture itself uh, correct? You know, maybe it's not. Because some of the things that could happen here is like when we bind this texture, uh, I don't know what happens if you bind texture 2D. Uh, and then uh, like, for example, one really easy thing that could be wrong is when we bind this texture, we don't know. It may be as simple as we're binding a texture, but we're calling a shader that expects an array, right? So it may just be that mismatch that's causing the problem and we needed to either set a different, like have two versions of our program, one that's compiled for texture arrays and one that's not, or maybe there's some kind of finesse you can do here where these texture, we just create everything as a texture array, but it's only one deep, right? 
So my guess is that's the actual problem we're seeing. Just, you know, I'm just guessing here, but that's my guess. Because, right, if you, if you remember, if we look back at the texture arrays itself uh, inside the OpenGL renderer, uh, let me just pull that up here. Uh, so if we look at, like, the samplers, um, as they're defined in, uh, let's say, the Z-Bias program is the thing that we're actually talking about here. Uh, so if we look inside the program that we're actually uh, talking about, which is the Z-Bias program here, uh, what we want to look at is how we're actually getting the textures out of it. You know what I'm saying? And so if we look at how we're getting the textures out of it, this is the pass-through, right? Uh, and then here's where it picks them up. And so when we look here, we've got uh, the 2D sampler array, uh, right here, this for text sampler. My guess is that you can't just bind a regular thing to that, right? You, can, you probably can't just say, I'm gonna bind a non-array texture to it. Um, that's my guess, right? So I'm guessing that if I was to bind a regular texture to that, it will just fail. Now, what I don't know is, is that, does that mean that the solution is as simple as just changing it to everything to a 1D texture array? Maybe it is. I don't even know if that's actually the problem, right? Um, so I, you know, I, that could just be fake news. It could be that if you bind the thing um, to it, that you end up in a situation where uh, it will just use that texture as a one dimensional texture array and you don't have to worry about it, right? I'm not 100% certain. So what the specification is there, I don't know. We could look it up, but I'd rather just test it and see uh, whether that's something that's logical just at first, just to see what the situation is with that. Um, so when I do GL allocate texture uh, and call into here, what we do is special texture, right? You can see what happens here where we do, uh, right, a GL text image 3D. If I was just to say, look, let's keep this exactly the same, right? And instead of doing GL text sub image 3D, just do text image 3D and just send the whole thing down. Does it work? You know, I have no idea, right? I'm just saying maybe that's the case. Uh, so let's take a look. So if I go look at GL uh, texture 2D array where we create it, um, which is here, you can kind of see where we're actually creating the thing. Uh, if I was to avoid actually ever creating it, uh, and instead just said like, look, let's do it this way where we do a bind texture and then set it up, right? Uh, what happens? So let's just see. I'm again, just totally speculatively here, just totally guessing, have no idea if it's actually the case. So if I was to do this and I bound these texture handles as a 2D array texture handles, and then I just go in and set them as 1D arrays, do we fix anything, right? Again, probably not. But I just want to know that that's not the case, because for all I know, when we have something that's expecting a sample from array, maybe it always has to be an array. You know, maybe that's just how that goes. So if I come up uh, and I look at allocate texture um, and I, you know, change this path here to basically do exactly the same thing the other one does. So I, I say, look, you know, here's the, uh, the bind instead of uh, calling GL text image 2D, call GL text image 3D. Um, and when we actually send that down, we'll just uh, specify the entire image itself, right? So, you know, we're, we're gonna pass the actual dimensions. We're gonna tell it that there's only one, right? That, that it doesn't have uh, multiples, right? Uh, and off we go. Something like this. Now, I don't know if that'll actually work. Like I said, we're just gonna try it and see what happens uh, because I'm just curious. I wanna kind of eliminate that as a possibility. Uh, just from looking at it, I want to see uh, what's going on with that. We might want to make some way, if, if this debugging goes on for a while, uh, having to wait to switch into the to the cutscene mode uh, is pretty annoying. So it would be nice to be able to sort of go in there and, uh, and have a, a more stable way of doing that. Hold on one second here. I must have passed something wrong. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's not great. Obviously, we don't want to try to pass down an entire sprite array's worth of data. I need to tell if there's only one slice to this particular one. Uh, sorry, but to finish what I was saying is, right now, in order to test the cutscene, since we boot into the game normally for testing purposes, I, would, I should go turn off the path that boots directly into the game. I should make it boot to the cutscene like it normally would at startup uh, so that we can watch the cutscene and see what's happening, right? Uh, all right, so we've got an error message happening here. That's kind of interesting. 
target doesn't match the texture's target. Oh, uh, yes, right. So one other thing we have to do in order to test that path is when we actually bind the texture inside the drawing loop, uh, we got to make that actually work. So inside the part where we do uh, the depth peeling here, well, let me do uh, this part. So in here where we actually want to uh, bind the textures and use them, uh, this has to bind the 2D texture array, right? Like this. Uh, so again, don't really know if this will do anything, just speculating and, and want to make sure that we're not, uh, that, that the only thing that's failing that isn't just some basic thing about you can't have a sampler, an array sampler bound if, uh, an array sampler in the shader if what you're binding uh, is a regular texture. And that's all I wanted to check. Uh, I, and I have no idea. Other people who know the spec better, like Martins, uh, probably know already whether that's a problem, um, but I don't. Oh, got to hit escape. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's all I want to check first. And then after that, I don't know, we might want to take a capture and see if the textures are being uploaded properly would be another thing to check. Um, trying to think of the other things we might want to check. Uh, but yeah, just basically start to go through it a little bit more forensically uh, and see if we can find uh, you know more errors there. So I'm still not seeing anything. So one thing I think I might want to do uh, is boot directly in here and see if we can't capture uh, frames uh, in like the debugger to see what we've actually sent down, right? To see why this is like, because for all we know too, you know, this draw elements may be drawing uh, things wrong. Uh, I don't really know. So, you know, just, just getting this stuff uh, right would be, would be probably part of it as well. Uh, looking in here, You know, something I also probably should do is this. Like, why not, right? So, uh, qu again, quad per texture as well. So we're getting the texture handle and we're stepping through those properly, I think. So each time we advance a quad, we're getting a texture out there and we're uh, getting a special texture handle, then we're binding it, which is correct. Uh, then we're drawing and we're moving on. Uh, so I think, again, that should be proper, right? I think all of that should be good. This right here should really be uh, that, I assume, because that's the thing we actually bound. Uh, at least it looks like to me. Although really all of these should be unbound as well. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter if it remains bound or not. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure there. So the, I think the next thing I want to do is try to validate what this is going to be grabbing for geometry. And maybe, like I said, you know, maybe the easiest thing to do just to make the debugging a little easier on us too going forwards is let's boot, um, instead of booting into the game, uh, let's actually allow it to, because um, like you see right here, this this is what boots uh, into the game. If we just get rid of that and instead boot directly into uh, the cutscene system, then that takes out a bunch of the uh, sort of uh, annoying stuff, steps that have to happen there in order to get to the part where we're actually trying to debug things. Uh, so there. You know, I guess one thing that I don't quite remember, I'm pretty sure that the lighting isn't a problem there. Like it wouldn't be lit as zero or anything. I'm assuming but anyway so let's try to boot up uh uh insight and just see uh if we can get any uh insight into our into what's happening with our cutscenes right so here's the the handmade hero target executable stuff uh and i think it's already set up to do what we want to do so i think if we just launch the game we should be able to do uh capture uh once we get far enough into the game where we think uh, we should be seeing uh, the cutscene and you know we're obviously not seeing the cutscene. So in order to capture a frame, uh, I think you can just go back here and say capture for live analysis, right? Is that uh, all I have to do? Yeah. Um, so now we, in theory, could get some insight into what's going on by just taking a look at all the information in the capture. What's this here? It says there's an issue, but how do I know what the issue is? 
Oh, right. These are just like uh, things that don't don't change the state. So we don't really need to do them, right? Yeah. Um, so first of all, let's just take a look at what's going on, right? Because what we, we should be able to see, um, we should hopefully be able to see us trying to draw some stuff, right? Uh, and so, coming through here, there's the multi-sample setup, there's a frame buffer. Um, I'm not really seeing our dispatch anywhere. Here we go. No, that's not our dispatch either. That's just the final mix down. Is there a good way I can jump to places where we draw rates? There we go. So triangle strip, this should have That's also just a mix down. So for some reason, I'm not really seeing, um, sorry, too many windows open now. We're getting spammy here. There we go. Um, for some reason, I wasn't really seeing the draw elements that I was expecting to see. Um, oh, you know what though? But the cutscene graphics would also kind of look like that. So now that I think about it, that's not dispositive. Um, so anyway, uh, let me just, yeah, right. Cause I keep forgetting we're not drawing little sprites anymore. I'm like looking for little sprites on the screen and I'm going, oh, this must be the mix down where we do a full screen quad, but no, no, it's cutscenes, so it would look like that even if it was just the cutscene stuff. Um, however, when I, you know, just again, still looking at these, there's, in terms of draw array calls here, uh, and I guess I could, um, let me just look at, oh, that's, that's really nice. Uh, in terms of these draw calls here, I'm also, where they exist, I'm not seeing um, any actual, I, I'm just really not seeing any actual um, calls that look like they fit the correct pattern. Because there should be a bind texture with a GL texture 2D array, right? Um, is there a way to do a filter for a bind texture? Ah, there it is. So there's GL texture 2D array. So that is definitely a bind to the type of texture we care about. So if I turn this off, you know, uh, dear NVIDIA people, this is pretty awesome. Like that was just super cool. I don't know if there's anyone from NVIDIA watching, uh, but if there is like the, the fact that you can just like search on like what you wanted to look like, which call you were looking for, go right there, then go back to the whole thing so you can see what happened around it. That's like exactly the kind of thing that people often get wrong and then it's super hard to use the tool. Like the fact that that all just worked exactly as I would have wanted it to is pretty awesome, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so if there's the bind texture and there's GL draw elements base vertex, that's actually uh, the old one Right, like that's actually, 
that's actually calling this. So it's not doing this path, it's doing this path, you know? Um, so, just looking at the places, uh, so for whatever reason, like we're just not even getting uh, a dispatch. So it looks like maybe the problem has nothing to do with the textures just yet. Um, We just don't even seem to be drawing anything. So that's a problem. Oh, I guess I don't really want to quit. Let's just uh, terminate. If I can, yeah. Uh, so, Endsight looked like it was working pretty well there to me. That seemed pretty clean. Got the capture, looked at the logs, everything went great. I'm going to assume this is our fault, meaning that there wasn't a problem with the capture and that we're just not hitting this path somehow. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a breakpoint in that path and make sure we hit it. Now, I thought we definitely were hitting it at least before um, because uh, if we weren't hitting it, then I don't know how we were getting the error that we were binding the wrong thing, right? In other words, we saw it... Uh, issue an error before because we were binding a texture handler with, with just GL2 texture, no array. So, I mean, it must have hit. So maybe what we're doing, so there it is, right? Uh, and so why we're not seeing this draw elements call occur, I'm not sure. Now it does take a little while to get there, but I thought we waited long enough and maybe the answer is we didn't wait long enough, right? Uh, I'm not sure. So maybe we just need a way of knowing when we've hit there. Now, there's something else weird going on here, so, and I'm not sure what it is. Now, you'll notice, um, uh, so if I like try to run this guy again, I don't really know how to do that. I guess I just do this. Um, is, is that the correct working directory? Maybe that's the problem is it can't load anything. What's the correct working directory for this uh, gentleman? Aha, that's the problem. So it just couldn't load any textures. There we go. Uh, so, oop. Okay, great. Now let's try again. Yeah, because I, I didn't see the fonts either, so I was wondering what was going on, and now we know. Uh, all right, so now that we're running here, we should be okay. And now we should be able to get one. I knew there was something wrong, I just didn't know what. All right. So now let's see if we can find an actual dispatch call that looks like the kind of call that we were expecting to see, because hopefully now we will. Uh, in fact, this one looks a little bit like it right here. Um, and, uh, and let's see what's going on, right? Uh, so that actually looks a little bit more like it. Uh, can we actually see this texture would be uh, my next question. Uh, uh, textures? So, I'm guessing this is the I'm just assuming this is the texture. This is pretty cute, by the way. Um, so I'm guessing that, that that's the texture and it's not actually being created properly. Um, here's our sprite sheet, uh, I think. Can we get some more information here? It's 
this is our sprite sheet right here. 512 by 512, 256 slices, right? So I don't really know. It looks like it never got, so it's trying to draw with a texture that just did not work in terms of texture specification. Now what's interesting about that is it didn't give us an error, right? So um, if I can just take one second, get up here. It didn't give us an error. So for whatever reason, this call, it's suggesting that this call failed, but that even though it failed, it didn't produce an error. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look up real quick on docs.gl uh, what GL text image 3D has to say, um, just so I can see here. So obviously the level parameter seems wrong. I don't know why. Yeah, that looks like that was just wrong from before. So, uh, and that might have to do, Martin's uh, actually filed a, uh, a thing to get us, so we could use text image 3D uh, in the place we were trying to use it before and it didn't work. Uh, and, and that might be part of it too. So that's was probably wrong. Width and height are probably right. The depth, the depth should be one because it's one wide, right? Um, Border is zero. So I think we're okay with most of this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's just see if this makes any difference. Um, sorry, I got a uh, disconnect end site here. And who else is holding? Oh, I disconnected it. I did not terminate it. Sorry. Uh, let's just build this. Uh, and then I will run it. Okay, so that's better. Um, so we are now correctly uh, getting imagery and it looks like, well, I don't know if we're correctly getting imagery. That may or may not be correct there, but um, it looks like we are screwing up one thing, which is that our texture coordinate computation, it looks like it's using um, the hard coded uh, to, to produce the U's and V's. Uh, it's, it's encoding those incorrectly. So what we probably just need to do to fix that uh, is inside handmade render uh, .cpp where we actually push the quad on. You can see where it does like its UV uh, computation here, right? This stuff. So what we actually want to do here is when we uh, look at the is special texture stuff, that's probably uh, the place we want to actually do this computation because um, we will actually be using the entire size of the texture, not a mapping of an interior part of the texture. So the probably the best way to do this uh, would be to say, let's take those UV zero through three um, which are being specified up in here. Uh, let's actually just correct those uh, where we go. And I think, I think that's really all that we should have to do. So what we can do is say, all right, um, assume that this is the inverse U and V up front. Uh, but then when we come in here, if we know that it's a special texture, we know that the UVs are not going to be based on these dims at all. So at that point, presumably all we have to do is say, okay, it, the in view and V it doesn't actually modify anything. Um, another way to do this, we could probably do it the reverse way, but either way is probably fine. So in view V uh, dot X probably and dot Y probably can now just be one. Um, and then we would not get that remapping of the texture, I think. Um, let's just take a look there. 
So we're getting closer to being correct, but we still have some issues here. So uh, some kind of odd issues as well. Like, first of all, we're getting no actual uh, animation there for some reason. So like the time step isn't applying or something. So like, or well, uh, more specifically, it could just be our, our offsets are not being applied. So like, it's just mapping to the whole screen always or something like this. We're also not getting any alpha blending. So it looks as almost as if the alpha blending has been turned like off or something. Um, so this one is moving, albeit only a little bit. So yeah, we're still, there's some weird, weird stuff happening here, and I don't know exactly what it is. So we're going to have to look into this a little bit further. Um, like, we're just definitely getting kind of weird stuff happening. And like, the edges are not alpha blended for some reason. Uh, which I don't know why that would be. Um, so that's a little bit peculiar. Um, so yeah, we're going to need to go in here and, and take a look. Probably one thing we should do is look at what we're actually passing in terms of color information and stuff like that, because I don't know to what extent um, those may be incorrect now. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> so the other thing I don't actually know is um, how is this actually pushing stuff on? It's just doing begin render group, yeah? Yeah. So it's also doesn't have clear color, clear depth on but I don't, is that because we got rid of those? I guess because render default just does that. So I wonder if it has to do with, uh, I wonder if it has to do with the depth peeling or something. I don't actually know. I'm just curious. I'm going to just, oops, that's the title screen. Uh, I'm just going to I see what's going on here. I don't actually know. So yeah, that's a total non-starter. So I'm not sure where to start looking for that particular piece of information. Just trying to think it through because it's trying to draw through the same draw path, you know, uh, the, the other stuff which is already working. Um, like this is all drawing through that same draw path and it works just fine with its transparency, right? And the game works just fine with transparency. Uh, so, right, like all the transparency just works fine there. So I don't really quite understand why we would be suddenly seeing problem with just the render path involving the large textures. I mean, yeah, like maybe, yeah, I don't have a solid theory. So I'm gonna just start investigating, see if I can come up with some leads uh, so I can figure out what's going on. Cause I really don't know. And I can't really think, um, I don't need that in there anymore. Uh, I really don't know 
what would be causing that and we haven't looked at the cutscene stuff in a while so i don't have a good idea either of like what would be like logical to to suspect there um so the focal length also maybe needs to be changed i suppose for possible things i don't really know but again that shouldn't be affecting the fading much so I'm going to go ahead and step into the where we actually push these down. I want to see what we're actually pushing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set a breakpoint when we actually push layers on, so I can watch like what goes into the actual buffer, right? So here's the push bitmap call, uh, and let's step into that. Uh, let me do an actual step into. Okay step into specific push bitmap they need a just a hotkey for step into the last one uh and i i don't know if there is one or not but that really needs to be a hotkey um so when we get the bitmap out here we're going to do a push bitmap call uh the push bitmap call is gonna uh do a push quad at the end of things right um so here we go down to the very end uh, where we're ready to push and of course step into a specific push quad um, so when we walk down here all I'm really gonna try and do now is figure out like what we're actually pushing on we know that this is right now because we're seeing the right textures uh, in play the vertex and index index stuff I think that should all be the same through most of these um, so that all seems fine and so the question is now just what are we producing here? So the UVs should like look at least relatively correct. So I don't suspect the UVs are the problem in a particular sense. And I don't know why they would affect the blending much um, either way. So let's see here. Uh, we've got... We've got color values. Oops. Well, you know what? Let me just let's push all these on here and let me just look at the vertices at the end of it. So here are all four vertices. If I switch to hex, oops. We can also look at the color. Um, of course, we're starting off at black because we're fading in, so probably we really should wait. Um, let me go ahead and and uh, and actually step through this once things have actually faded in. All right, uh, now it's breakpoint there. Okay, so uh, now let's step in to the renderer, same place. And if we look now, we should see, yeah. So those are, you know, color values we would expect. So that seems about right. Um, the light indexes being zero is, I think, correct because that will turn the lighting off. Um, so there will be no lighting. So I feel like that should all be correct. Um, so it looks, honestly, I mean, that looks like we're pushing down uh, proper values there. Now, texture index zero I guess I don't really know uh, to what extent that would cause problems for things it it may be that the texture index wants to be zero always like I don't really know what will happen inside the sampler if you pass something that's out of bounds. I would have thought the clamp would just work, but maybe it doesn't. So just to be on the safe side, since there's only one entry in these texture arrays, I'm gonna say that when we push a quad down um, that's a special texture, it needs to set the texture index to be something else, right? So it should always like floor it to zero. 
Um, so basically when it puts it in here, it will always be zero because we are setting the texture manually. So it shouldn't ever um, use anything other than slice zero. Now, I don't really think that was probably the problem because it should have, uh, yeah, and it's not. I would say it should just clamp. So I don't think it should matter, uh, <clears throat> you know? Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that that was not weird. So yeah, I mean, as far as I can tell, we're just getting some weird like depth occlusion stuff happening um, that doesn't seem like it. Now that may just be because the depth blend, like is the depth blending just not working for some reason? And maybe like, Trying to think of why that would fail. Let me think. So when we actually, oops, when we actually draw, uh, that's right here when we actually draw these I wonder if there's some kind of bug like we're now gonna have more than one render group entry type let me just try to think out loud here so you know what I'm uh, sort of investigating or trying to investigate. So one thing we do know is that because all of our calls get aggregated into a single call effectively, for the game when it's running, we actually don't have any, uh, th this only happens once in the actual game render, I think. Because literally all of the sprites and all of the cubes get stuck into one single giant quad dispatch and the only time we have two quad dispatches is if you use more than 16 bits worth of um, indices. Now we do use more than 16 bits worth of indices in the uh, test app, the external app. Uh, but for all we know, there might be some issues with that one that we just can't see. So we don't really know what happens when you call uh, render entry textured quads more than once. So one question is, is there something that when we updated the renderer um, that we did like some kind of, uh, we introduced some kind of thing where you can't call it twice without having some errors. What is debug setup? I'm gonna remove that. Um, so I don't know, that's, I'm just like wondering if there's like a texture bind problem that it's like doing something weird, it, leaving something bound that shouldn't be bound. Um, I'm just not sure. So, you know, uh, in here we do like an active texture one, we bind active texture zero, active texture two, bind three, bind zero again. We never bind texture zero. Um, but we do unbind texture one. We don't unbind textures two or three. So I'm not sure uh, why we take that extra time to do that. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. This right here really wants to just unbind the texture 2D array, um, which would be that, but I don't see that's getting rebound every time, so it doesn't seem likely uh, to be anything problematic, I wouldn't think. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. So I guess the next step might be let's insight capture this and see what's going on. Um, it really looks like, you know, you can see too, 
uh, around those edges. Like, I wonder if this is just a case of like, hey, the depth peeling isn't meant to handle four things, five things stacked on top of each other. Um, I don't really know. Uh, but it, it sure seems like it should be handling it better than that. You know what I mean? Um, so one thing I'm curious about is if we actually want to skip the depth peeling altogether uh, and we do begin frame, uh, I'm just curious, like, can we just move this stuff outside of that loop? So, you know, uh, you know, maybe let's hear, here's a question for you. Suppose we just like had the renderer skip that part Uh, and said like, oh, all right, um, <clears throat> if we're going to render the title screen, like first, like do this thing. To get the depth peels out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Then. Uh. I guess just zero. So again, this is just, oh, that's, that's the title screen. So this would just like pre, you know, sort of push it. Um, to see if we're just, because we changed the render around, if really um, it's just a case of like, we didn't quite really finish making it support um, rendering without using the depth feeling at all. Uh, so I guess we don't really need a background color here. So again, really strange. So that does work, right? And presumably these are all going through the non-depth peeling pass now. And let me just verify that they're going through the non-depth peeling pass. Because uh, that would be... Um, where's the OpenGL stuff? That's not it. That's it. Um, or not, there we go. Uh, so let me just verify that we're not going through the depth filling pass here. So when we actually come through here, um, I, I guess I should actually set the breakpoint here and say when we when we draw these guys, uh, peeling should be false, and it is. Uh, so we're going through the non-depth peeling pass now. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that stuff should just accumulate on top, uh, and we should get. Um, we should just be getting alpha blending, but we're definitely not. It's almost like it's truncating our alpha down to one bit or something. Um, so I think This would happen if we drew in the wrong order, right? Because if we have depth testing on and we drew in the wrong order, we'd get this result. So I, I wonder if maybe that's what's going on here. Not sure I understand So we were already drawing backwards wise. So it doesn't seem likely, but I'll try it. Um, oh, no, we weren't. So we switched to drawing forwards for some reason, not sure why. So, all right, 
let's suppose we were to do this. And draw in the opposite order. All right, so this just gets weirder and weirder. So now what you're telling me is that if I draw in the opposite order, the amount of zoom changes? Okay, is there something weird going on here where we... Like we're getting some weird stuff happening now. So if you look at what's going on here, what we're saying is that just simply by picking a different layer, order, right? Because this was it originally, right? Just by picking a different layer order, we got movement. So we've got something seriously whack happening right now. All right, I'm gonna leave it that way. And I am going to go ahead and do an insight capture and look at what the vertex arrays are because I am totally confused right now. Totally confused. I would just like it known that I have no idea what that's doing which is often the case with hardware rendering, just to be clear. Capture. So now we can, in theory, look at like what's going on here, right? As we sort of come up through here. So um, here's the render building up each phase. So uh, looking at this render, let's look at it here. So this is what's happening. So first we draw this bitmap and that looks correct. Uh, then we draw this bitmap and what you can see is that we get no transparency. Um, we only get an alpha cutout, right? And I have no idea why that's happening. Like, I have no idea why it, it's not blending with the background. So even just right there, we've already hit a, a snag. So the first thing I want to know is, like, why isn't it alpha blending? Like, what did we do wrong? And there's two ways it could be wrong. One way it could be wrong is the texture's alpha got screwed up. The other way is we don't turn on the right blending modes or something. So let's first look to see what the blending modes actually are, right? So looking through here, um, we are drawing multi-sample, so I don't know if that's necessarily bad or not. Um, this is the texture, and I don't know if I can see... Um, what the alpha so there is there's all kinds of alpha in there you can see it so it doesn't really seem like that's likely i mean there's the alpha right it should be really clear you know um so it doesn't seem like it's a problem with the textures alpha uh it seems like something we're doing to the textures alpha that's a problem uh here's the pixel ops so we, we do have depth testing on, but that should be okay because those are further away, um, I would think. Now, maybe that's not true. Like maybe we've got uh, some bad stuff happening there. The blending state's obscured by my head, so I can't see it. So maybe we'll just do this. Uh, 
Uh, so blending state. Is there, um, where's the blending function? Uh, here it is. So everything's getting written, R through A. Uh, no multiplication happening on the source, which is correct for pre-multiplied alpha. Uh, destination has inverse, which is what I expect, and then it's adding. So I don't quite get how that could be wrong unless what we're reading as a color value uh, in the shader is wrong because that means that assuming it was actually sampling from that texture, it should have gotten us the proper alpha value. We saw it in there, right? So if we look at the fragment shader, um, here's the source code to the fragment shader. Uh, and we look at what's actually happening. So what comes in here? We do textile fetch on the lights. Uh, and uh, that should just be ignored, hopefully. Um, let's see where that actually gets done. So we start out by saying if depth peel, I'm assuming that depth peel is false in this particular one uh, because, well, it's supposed to be. Uh, because we're in we're not in peeling mode I don't know how to tell if that's true it isn't showing me like a compiled version of this um, unfortunately so I'm not sure if this can tell me whether it actually got um, ifed out there oh well let me see it should say it here yeah death peel is zero so it's not gonna do that that's not there so then we come through here and we say, all right, let's get the array UV going. Um, the frag texture index in theory should be zero. And when we texture sample that, we'll get out uh, the texture with the, with the alpha in it, right? Um, shader sim text reads should be zero, right? Oh, oh no, read the source should be is one. Uh, that's not correct. So this graphics card supports sRGB textures, so we should not be doing that. Right? Uh, that's just straight up wrong. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, all right. So we need to look at what our alpha threshold is. Uh, although it shouldn't really matter because again, we're not getting blending anywhere. So no matter what our alpha threshold is, it's probably borked. But just looking through things here. So I would say before we go any further, this is not really related to the problem at hand, but since we see it, we should fix it. Um, that that uh, sRGB stuff is is broken. And I, I thought we got that right. Um, and we obviously haven't. Uh, so, so this is, this is bad. Uh, 
we have simulation for sRGB in there for cards that don't support it, but I thought these should support it. I don't know why that's happening. Um, that seems really bad. So I'm gonna look at Simtex write sRGB. Uh, I'm gonna see what's going on there, why we're not uh, getting any of that stuff. Uh, so, do we like not define allow GPU sRGB or something? Is that like a mistake? Was there a reason that we did that? I wonder how long that's been wrong. I mean, I guess to be fair, it's not necessarily wrong in the sense that if we always had it turned off, then we probably weren't submitting textures as sRGB. You know, we probably had that turned off because, well, yeah, I don't know why we had it turned off. All right, uh, it's lost to the sands of time. I must wanna take a look at what goes on here uh, to make sure that that actually still works because that, that's just weird. Um, so, okay, just gonna go ahead and It is still one. We're stepping in. Because, yeah, I don't know why we wouldn't be getting that. So that's zero in both cases now. Here's us compiling the Z-Bias program. Those are both now defined to zero. So that's what we should be seeing now in here, right? That was probably just some old thing. It probably just left that loaded. Let's hope that's true. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is gonna draw it again. And I'm just gonna look at that fragment shader and see if we can now verify that it's not busted. Yeah, there we go. So I would like that to be uh, working properly. So let me just verify that it actually is in, in everywhere else. So if we run now, oh, we can't both open this apparently. Come on, there we go. So if we run now, I wanna make sure everything still looks okay. So assuming all that's fine and happy, we're back to just our original problem, which is why are we not getting alpha blending um, that it looks like we should be getting? What's getting in the way of the alpha blending? Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to, let me close this down. Let's go ahead and go back to a 
frame capture and watch it build up and see what's happening there because I really just don't know. It looks like it should be blending properly, but it's definitely not. So, all right, take that scene, capture. Um, if we look through here, nothing gets done really. So this is the first time anything happens that's important. Uh, that looks fine. Here's us drawing uh, our next one and it's totally not fine. We're not getting any alpha blending at all. So I don't actually know, if we look at the fragment shader itself, let's get this out here. Uh, maybe that can be like on here because either I'm looking at events or I'm looking at code probably. Um, so looking through here, when we actually uh, update this information, it's the output is blend unit color. And by the way, this stuff can all be simplified dramatically now because we don't write to more than one unit at a time. Uh, so we probably should get rid of a lot of this uh, junk anyway. But uh, when we output the blend unit color uh, here, it's the surface reflect that we use. So the surface reflects alpha is what we care about. Um, and so let's just look at how that actually gets set. So basically it will discard anything whose alpha isn't over a particular threshold. That seems fine. Uh, inside here, we'll take the mod color, which is alpha amount, uh, which comes from the, uh, the fogging, times the frag color times text sample. So, you know, it could have something to do with the fog, right? Um, it could very well be. So like, <clears throat> so this stuff let's take a look at the um, vertex shader So in here, the fog distance does the inner product with the fog direction, and the fog direction is zero. So fog distance will also be zero when it comes out of here, right? Um, how do I, so there we go. Um, so when fog distance comes out as zero, in here that means the lerp will not lerp. So the, So the fog amount should be zero in both cases. So here is a particularly strange situation. The alpha start and end and the fog start and end are both on the same value, which is definitely wrong. So I would say that alpha amount is completely bogus right now. That's just old news and is wrong. Once mod colors alpha gets set, in this case I'm not sure why anything is getting drawn because if the fog distance, oh because it's negative 99 I guess.
I guess because that's set to negative 99, it will end up producing an alpha amount of 1, probably. So here's what I'm going to recommend first. I'm going to set those values to known values to make sure that that's not the problem. And then we're going to go from there. Uh, and then I'm going to look a little bit more closely at how we're computing those because that alpha clip start and end should be based on the actual screen Z more so than the fog Z because the fog can go could go in a different direction, right? Um, if we wanted it to. So that part's a little bit uh, iffy. But all right, so let's just take a look. Um, where's our Z bias? Here it is. So in this particular piece of code here, what I want to do is make it so that uh, these just get uh, switched around. So the alpha amount will always be one um, and the fog amount will always be zero. Uh, and I want to see if that has an effect on things. So that doesn't. So it's not even that. So the 99 does actually work in that case. So how is our alpha? So let's try some other things here. In this situation, I'm going to set the surface reflect A to be 0.5. So that means essentially that every surface we draw should be at half uh, translucency, right? And so still nothing like it there's appears to be nothing we can do to get the actual alpha blend to occur right even though we're saying you must alpha blend at 0.5 it's like no i'm not going to do that you can't make me do that um i'm i'm going to I, i'm i'm i just i simply won't i simply refuse right So why is that happening? Why is our texture sample A wrong? Or sorry, why is our blend always wrong? Uh, because we should be able to get it to show something of the background through by setting the surface reflect A to something else. Right? Um, I mean, you can even see it that it dimmed, but the alpha value has not been affected. So somehow we're not getting alpha blending, even though we're forcing the alpha channel to be 0.5, and we know that blending is on, because we just looked at it. It doesn't matter because it refuses to actually blend. can't say I know why that's happening. Did I mention I hate hardware rendering? I do. Just make sure I'm not crazy here. Uh, so again, looking at this draw call here,
we don't really get any information about it. Um, that would indicate something went wrong. Uh, and so if we look at all of the information that we've got here, uh, the, the uh, index and vertices and stuff seem good enough, right? Uh, and I don't see anything particularly unusual occurring, right? Inside the fragment shader, we are sampling from exactly the things that we think we're sampling from. Uh, and we can verify that our texture sampler here uh, does actually have alpha in it. Of course, we forced the alpha to 0.5, so we know that it, that obviously doesn't even really matter, right? All of this stuff looks right. I can't see any particularly weird stuff happening here, right? I have no idea. I don't see anything unusual happening there. That's exactly the blend that I would have wanted, right? I don't know how to see more of that. Is there a way to like, there we go. It's on add and it's one minus source alpha for destination. So that all is exactly right. So how can you possibly have that be the draw buffer settings and not blend? Anyone? So what's this? What's this right here? Texture you're gonna find zero. So the fact that texture zero still has this bound to it. Hmm, that is a little concerning. Unit zero has these two things bound. Unit one has these two things bound. I can't say that it should matter which one of those is bound because really we know we're only going to pull from the array when we use an array sampler. So the fact that this is bound shouldn't really matter. but I really don't have any idea what's going on there. Um,
I am out of ideas. So I think at this point, I'm probably going to have to start like making simpler stuff to see what's going on because I have no idea what's actually wrong here. I'm not sure how you could get a more straightforward thing than this. Like it's literally just drawing the thing and you get no alpha. Even though we definitely set alpha um, in here and it did not matter. So like, Somehow, it's not doing alpha blending, even though it has a partial alpha, is set to the correct blending mode. I really have no idea how that could be possible. This is a little interesting. So if I do insert clear, Everything becomes like white and red. Is that a bug in Ensight? Or is that really what would happen if we were to clear the buffer? You know what I mean? So while I'm here, because I don't have any other ideas, I would like to get rid of the multi-target stuff. So like blend unit color, for example. Like, I'd like to stop making that be three things. So what is some of this stuff? Compile, resolve, multi-sample has like some weird stuff in it. just get some of this stuff out of here. All right, PL2 lighting. We know that's gone. So yeah, I don't really know what's going on. So I want to simplify this down a little bit first. Uh, just make sure we have no problems with that. Hey, Krampus. And also, I feel like the aspect ratio is wrong. So, and, and we, when we flip the order of things, they were wrong. There's some really weird stuff going on. I feel like maybe with our submission process as well, like the vertices are maybe incorrect or something like this uh, additionally. So I don't know, like we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go a little bit deeper down into this, but that's okay. But first I just wanna get rid of some of this cruft because it makes it harder for me to see what's going on when we've got a bunch of legacy things in here that we don't use anymore. Cause then I'm like, wait, is that something that we care about? No, it's not. Um, so let's take a look here. So, uh, resolve multi sample. Let me see here. So we've got a couple things here. Depth peel of the lighting is gone. Fake seed lighting is gone. 
right? Uh, so resolve multi-sample uh, who uses this and how? Yep, that all looks fine. So that's exactly what I would have thought. So I'm not sure why it needs to write to multiple buffers. So we don't have these things anymore, like emit sampler and NPL, right? Those are not actually there. Um, so like emit and NPL are gone. We do have color and depth. But emit and MPL, we definitely don't, right? So we really just have that one surface reflect. So I think the blend unit color can just be one thing in this case. And it really can just be can just be that, right? So can I just Can I just get rid of this entirely everywhere? And I think I can. All right, uh, so just taking a look at what happens. Now, uh, I just want to make sure that we didn't uh, bust anything that, oops, that was working, um, like, you know, our regular drawing and stuff, but I don't think we did. So that just simplifies that down nicely. And, you know, I'll make sure that also, since we have a renderer test as well, that the renderer test works. Yep. All aces. Um, so all we really need to do, uh, needed to do to do that was just take a little bit of a delete key to the situation, which I think is good. Uh, because that stuff was just kind of old crufty stuff that really didn't need to be in there. Uh, so I'm glad we got rid of that. Okay, so now let me look to just to see what we had in terms. I don't think there's anything else particularly that, that got removed entirely like that. But that just makes it nicer. So now, in theory, right, if I do an insight capture, we won't have that weird, like, um, there's sort of that weird, like, multiple color target thing, which I'd like to make sure is not a thing because we shouldn't have, it should only be rendering to one thing uh, in each of these scenarios, right? So yeah, so like this, like why is this still here? Um, what is going on? Do we pass something down in terms of the number of color targets that we were that we're still passing down as a four, you know what I'm talking about? Um, that we should get rid of, because I would like to get rid of that. Yeah, we've got three color attachments, so that needs to stop. So let's find that color. So when we create a frame buffer, we're creating color attachments here for 
how many exactly for color buffer count? Where do we actually define that? Yeah. All right, so what we want to do is this, I believe. Um, and when we actually bind these things in here, we don't really want this. In fact, we don't want any of this either, do we? Like that's all not a thing. So again, just trying to get rid of this stuff because it's just gonna make the debugging more complicated. And we definitely have a lot of things in there that we don't actually need. Because this was all from when we were doing other kinds of lighting experiments. So we are missing a little bit there. Uh, and why is that? So this is reading from the light buffers. We may still be using that for lighting, I suppose. No, that's just wrong. So what was actually going on here that made that important? So for each peel, I'm assuming front, so this is for the final composite. So I think what's happening here is just for each peel, we were probably skipping uh, one of those NPLs. So let's look at the final, let's look at the um, peel composite program uh, and just see what's going on here. Yeah, so we don't want the NPL samplers Right, because that's just not a thing we're doing anymore. We do the lighting directly. Um, so that's the problem with there is that needs to be removed because those go in order, right? So the NPL stuff needs to just to just die, right? Um, that all goes away and I don't even know why those were there. None of this is necessary. So it's really just that, right? Cause that's all we're doing now. We don't do lighting in there at all. So these are gone, these are gone, and we're just left with the four depth fields that we actually composite, right? Okay. So I think that should now be clean where it's only taking the depth fields and compositing the depth fields together, which is all I actually wanted in the first place now, because uh, that other stuff is all just there for like old sort of lighting experiments, all right. Okay, well, there is a lot of cruft in there from all of our experimentation. Sometimes you just got to go in and clean it up. So if I now 
uh, do capture. Hopefully I can finally get rid of our extra color targets, which I don't need anymore, and we're just kind of getting in the way. So here we've got a color and a depth target, and that's what we want. So those are correct, right? Um, that's good. That's what we should see. <clears throat> uh, now, if we insert a clear beforehand, why that turns red, I really don't know. And I'm not sure if that's, is that normal? Um, to, have, to have the R and B channels flip like this, uh, that just seems really odd. I don't know if that's just a bug in the system, but we shouldn't be seeing that. Like, I don't know what is causing that specifically. So that's a little disquieting. I'm hoping that's just a bug in Insight. If it's not, we got bad news. Um, so let's tackle this into, you know, we know this is, is pretty darn nasty what we're seeing here. Um, so let's tackle this into uh, passes or two, two steps here, right? <clears throat> So a couple of things we know. First off, I think we know that we've got some kind of problem with how we're specifying our actual drawing data, uh, separate from the fact that the, that the blending isn't working at all, right? Which we don't have any idea why. Um, but we also know that we're getting some kind of weird like positional corruption. And the reason I say that is because uh, if we, do some very basic stuff here that I don't understand why it's happening. Uh, we can see, uh, okay, sorry about that. There we go. Uh, so if we do some very basic stuff here, such as here is uh, one pass through that scene, right? Where we, um, uh, where we're just drawing the layers in the same order that we were drawing them uh, before, right? And what you can very clearly see is that there's very little movement. Now you can see that there's some movement because you can see some like weird warp artifacts moving through here, like weird little like, it's almost like bilinear is also not working properly or something. So you can see some weird artifacts moving through here. Um, and and I, I guess that's, that might just be because we're stretching it down too much. Like it, it could be not by linear's fault in that case, right? But it is moving. However, if we go in and change the way that it's rendering the cutscene, just to render them in the opposite order. So literally all I did here was say, look, render them in the opposite order. All I did was change the order, right? Um, first. Uh, if all I do is change the order, all of a sudden you get way more motion. Uh, there should be no difference between those two, right? Like the order in which we send the things down should not have any effect uh, on on the speed at which it's interpreting those things. Like, I have no idea how that's happening. So to me, what that suggests is that when we're outputting those particular types of quads, we're actually outputting the vertex data subtly wrong. Somehow not wrong enough to cause corrupted quads, but wrong enough to cause like the wrong texture to be associated with, you know, the wrong plate or something, right? So don't know how that's happening, but we should be able to figure that out, right? And so let's start by trying to solve that. And then when we get that right, we can move forward to try to figure out how our alpha blending is perplexingly not working, which must be something else because we looked at the alpha blending and it was on. So it must be something that just makes it look like the alpha blending is not working, but the alpha blend actually is working and something else is not working, which is the way it usually goes with harder rendering because you can't step in there and see. Um, what the actual problem is. So if I look at push quad here, I know all these are going to the special texture path. And so I know this is fundamentally what's going on. This quad texture is quad texture count plus, you know, texture. That's actually where we're setting that texture there. Uh, and then it's gonna output these uh, vertices, right? The verts and the indices. And those are gonna come from just whatever the current uh, index stuff is, right? Now the base index stuff here, 
Um, I feel like that should always be off the full amount, so I feel like that sh is getting set properly. Uh, based on the vertex array offset itself. Uh, and so really I don't see much of an issue there. So my question is, is everything okay here? I'm wondering if maybe this never gets used. In fact, that sounds likely to me. Um, I think that could be a problem. So here we are in, in textured quads, vertex array offset is never getting used. So our draw elements base vertex call uses that properly. Our draw elements call does not use that properly. Uh, and that would do it. Now, draw elements, uh, I feel like in this case, we should just be able to use the call directly. Uh, unsigned short, we have a jill void. Uh, and so we've got this guy here. You know, now I'm wondering, is that part of our problem with the alpha blending too? Because it would mean potentially that the depth was always wrong. Like it was just Z fighting. You know what I'm saying? Um, potentially. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Let me go in and make sure it's drawing in the right order now because I changed that. All right. So I do think we now at least have the proper, you know, plates because this looks like the cutscene again. Alpha bunning's still totally wrong. You know what I'm saying? So that didn't get fixed. Um, but the plates are now correct. So that was definitely a bug and that got fixed, which is good. Unfortunately, doesn't really change the fact that alpha blending just looks straight up off to me. Um, it looks like we're just getting the alpha discard and never a blend. So when it goes to try and blend, it's blending with nothing or not blending and just producing black uh, instead of actually producing the composite color. So we're still left with one GPU mystery and we don't know what that is. Let's go ahead and take a capture, uh, but I'm assuming it won't really tell us anything that we don't already know. Uh, but now that we fixed that problem, uh, I'd at least like to look at analysis from the properly uh, submitted set. So here is step one, here is step two. Uh, what I will say is I don't know why depth test is on. Um, Uh, but unless I'm really misunderstanding things, which let's be honest, could easily be the case, 
we're just looking at the result. Like this is the result of just building up the back buffer. We like this is the depth wheel composite here going on. Um, and so I don't understand why we would get an alpha blending fail in just building up a single depth peel. Like if alpha blending was off right here, um, it would make more sense. Is there some way that I'm just reading this wrong and alpha blending is just off, right? Like that, that would be what I would expect, but it seems like blending was on. And maybe it wasn't really on. Maybe the blend was off entirely. And it just said this is, maybe what it was trying to say is this is the blend mode that would have been on if you had blending on. I don't actually even know where they list that. Um, hold on a second. Let's see if we can find it. Just trying to find if there's something that says where their blending's on. Um, there it is. All right. So never mind. I take it all back. Uh, that was a slight, that was a mistake. I admit that. Okay, I admit that was a mistake. So I think I literally just wasted like 30 minutes because I didn't look at the false that was in that category. Um, because that's the entirety of the problem, right? All of the blend function may be set correctly, but if it's not turned on, then it doesn't work. Now what I don't know is why it's off. Let's take a look. So we disable blending uh, when we're writing into the frame buffer for the depth peels. However, when we stop depth peeling, I would like to then turn blending on, I believe. Uh, so I feel like when we're in end depth peels, um, kind of feel like I want to do that, right? Uh, so hey, good news is we were right uh, about the blending being not on. Turns out the reason that the blending was not on is because blending was literally not on, uh, which eliminates a certain amount of the mystery, to be sure. I guess we're done. Uh, that, that was it. There wasn't any mystery to it. The reason blending wasn't on was because blending wasn't on. That was a colossal waste of everyone's time. Well, at least we did find out why blending wasn't on, and the reason is because blending wasn't on. Uh, which is probably a good thing to check more carefully. That's probably just chalk it up to me not knowing how to use Ensight uh, since I've only used it like the times on stream that you've seen me use it so far. And I clearly was not used to looking in the right place to find the information we were uh, needing to know there. Uh, the cutscenes look good now. Um, they look they look right to me. Uh, let's watch them all the way through once. I, I do wish we had these guys snapping to the screen. I don't know when that stopped happening. Probably um, they're like done in pixel coordinates now or something. But let's just take a look to make sure there's no obvious like weirdness going on there.
isn't he supposed to put the hat on? There we go. I was like, when does he put the hat on? It's always good when Krampus comes in. You know stuff's going to get good when Krampus comes in. It's all looking good. Yeah, greatest hand we hear upside a real hand sign example for or a digress. Yes, absolutely. Like graphics programming is always like which of these 100 million settings that occur throughout the course of this frame got set wrong and I can't step into anything and see, right? Sometimes you get it gets better like sometimes like they have um things we can just drill down to a particular pixel and actually step through it on like you know if you're on like a console or something and then it's a lot easier um but like when you can't step through a shader you're like well let me just guess all right all right q a That was annoying, but on the, s on the scale of 1 to 10 of graphics bugs, like, something that you can find in 30 minutes, is even if it's stupid, is still great, right? You're still really happy with that, because at least it didn't take you, like, days, and then you go, like, oh, crap, it's this thing. Uh, I missed what was preventing the parallax movement. Could you point out that again real quick? Also, is it just me or is the gamma off a little on the cutscenes? It looks a bit washed out. Um, so two things. One, uh, yeah, the parallax movement prevention was that we weren't properly offsetting the base vertex when we submitted the draw buffers. So if you went down the, the per tex texture per quad path, we never set the base vertex, so it was always using the first quad, which of course is the one that's in the back and just standing still, right? Um, so yeah. As far as the gamma's a little off, it is uh, because remember, we have not packed these textures as sRGB. Um, so in the future, we probably should pack them as actual sRGB. We pack them right now as squared. Uh, so if you want um, to be a little more accurate, that was the thing that I, was playing with before uh i just wanted to make sure it worked we can turn it back off now if you want uh if if it's makes you feel better but uh this right here was whether or not we were going to use the cards um version and you know we could leave that off and just always use our own squared square rooting uh this is what the actual things were packed as um and so i don't know if that might be what you were sensitive to, or it may just be that 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 you just would prefer a more saturated, um, whether you just prefer it more saturated to begin with. Uh, 
in OpenGL allocate texture in the non-special texture case, you're calling the get texture index from to mask all the special texture bit, but at this point you know that this bit isn't set, or am I reading this incorrectly? Uh, no, you're correct. I just want to make sure we go through that in case we change it later. I want to make sure everyone always does that. Do you have the story for the game all written, thought out, or you're still working on it? Uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, that's where, what the cutscenes were made from. All right, uh, let's wrap it up, shall we? All right, thank you everyone for joining me for an episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you want to follow the series at home, you can always peer to the game on handmadehero.org and it comes with a source code so you can compile it and play around with it yourself um we will be back here next week i believe uh yeah i think next week um for i suspect at this point maybe just a little render or cleanup now that we've done everything i think we have all the features in there we may want to add a little bit of a particle system fast path uh which maybe sex sets like a texture once and does some uh fancier things so you may want to do a little bit of uh, extra additions now that everything seems to be working and we're in the fast path now. But I think we're back to basically just wanting to do tags um, so we can decorate the world. Uh, so probably the next steps are just, if we want to do a fast path with particles, we could leave that to later though, when we actually have more particle effects to think about. Um, but uh, it's really that, and then I think the tags is the is the really big thing. So we gotta we gotta come up with a good way of actually being able to sort of more closely tie uh, the world gen to the art assets so that we can decorate the world, put textures on cubes that we want, and um, you know, put sprites in the world that correspond to spe the specific stuff from the imported art assets. So that's really what we're, we gotta do next, decorate the world basically, um, put textures on everything. And uh, we got some open issues there to think about. So we'll be starting on that next weekend, probably. That's my guess. Uh, hopefully see you back here for that. Uh, until then, have fun programming. I'll see everyone on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.